Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk a little bit about the position Linux Mint is holding and continuing to hold on snaps as they move on to Linux Mint 20, which is based on the new Ubuntu 20.04 package base, which is far more aggressively snap required than has been in the past. Now, I had been asked about this a couple times and I have made the prediction that they're probably going to do something else rather than give us Ubuntu's apt Chrome, which installs SnapD, because Linux Mint has some very legitimate and serious concerns about snaps. Now, understand that I don't think snaps are the absolute most horrendous thing in the world. I have been very vocal about the position of snaps and the challenges that they pose. Yes, they do bring about some solutions, but they bring about a lot of problems and concerns at the same time, especially from um, being that it's it's run by a company that is has the greatest propensity to be bought up by Microsoft in the near future. Who knows? Those ideas are running around as well. But to understand what we are talking about entirely, I want to go back to a blog post from about a year ago. This is actually 11 month ago blog post on the Linux Mint blog. So this is back to June of 19, which would have been released July 2nd, 2019. Of course, I'm recording this on uh, June 2nd, 2020. And so the position here, and I'm not going to read all of this, but I do want to read some significant portions of it because it really highlights the concern that, no, I'm just not some crazy lunatic on the internet. Oh my God. Ah, you know, and, and I get that sometimes where, um, yeah, I'm not the, I'm not the most knowledgeable guy in the Linux community in the background. Hey, I came to Linux to learn how to get my work done on Linux because I did not like the privacy concerns in Windows. But I'm starting to see some of those same things creep up into Linux through things like Snap as a possibility, not as a guaranteed thing. But uh, Clem here in writing this blog post just pins this down so well. So I'm going to read portions of this and I'll go ahead and have this article and the next article linked below so you can go ahead and read it all for yourself. And I encourage you to read all of this if you want to understand the concerns that I have with Snap and why I'm still committed to Linux Mint being such an excellent distribution for its ease of use in the Linux world and the fact that it is one of those few distributions that's still holding on to privacy like there's no tomorrow. Like, we're not going to ping your system. We're not going to force all these updates. We're not, I mean, it, you have still have the control with a fully well functional system in your computer. So let's go ahead and start up with the top here. When Snap was announced, it was supposed to be a solution, not a problem. It was supposed to make it possible to run newer apps on top of older libraries and to let third-party editors publish their software easily towards multiple distributions, just like Flatpak and AppImage. That we didn't want, uh, what we didn't want was for Canonical to control the distribution of the software between distributions and third-party editors to prevent direct distribution from editors or to make the software work better in Ubuntu. Um, rather than anywhere else and to make the store a requirement. So understand this is 11 months ago. Let's unpack some of the things in here that we're talking about. One of the factors is right now, still the only place you can grab your snaps is from the snap store. That means that, um, and he uses the example here later on in the article, we may or may not read that part. He's talking about Android applications. So an Android application is a .apk file. A publisher or somebody who writes their software can go through, extract the code, make, uh, package the APK, and distribute it on their website. Signal is one application that does this, although they really want you to download it from the Google Play Store. But it's one of the applications that you can go on. Um, the Tor Project has this. You can go into the Tor Project and download the APK files. So rather than forcing you to go through this store like the Google Play Store, aka Malware Zone, you can actually go directly to the trusted website, download the copy directly from the developer, do a checksum to make sure it's what they say it is, and then you can install that sideloaded onto your Android phone very easily. Of course, in modern Android versions, you have to toggle the, the setting and the security to allow you to install APKs from unknown sources. That is something you can't do in the Snap Store. You can do that in flat packs. You can do that in app images. Snaps, you can't. You are locked to getting your software. 
The second point that I'm going to bring up here that he doesn't address in this article, because I don't think it's an issue that that they necessarily saw coming down the pipeline. It's one thing to use um, the example they're going to use in the article here is Spotify. Spotify pushes a snap through the canonical store. They don't push a file that you can just download and sideload it. They don't, uh, I think they do a flat pack, I think. Um, But uh, I'm sorry, I don't use Spotify, so uh, I can't say exactly what they have. I'm just commenting on what he had in the article here. So the concern that he, that he didn't bring up because I didn't, I don't even think he necessarily saw this coming is that a lot of the applications in the snap store, they're not even built or packaged by the actual software developers. So I've done this example. If you go back and look at my uh, my video when Ubuntu 20.04 first come, came out and maybe it was back into the betas, you look for simple screen recorder. The original developer has not released a snap. We have some um, Chinese guy who released a snap. We have another unofficial one in the snap store, but none of them are the actual developer. And so what they're, what's happening is we're getting a whole lot of packages that are not even built by the developers that are being packaged up in many cases by the canonical team, in many cases just by third-party independent people, which in and of itself raises the concern about, well, what's really going into these packages, especially since you really just can't grab the dot snap and install it. And that's one of the things that he's talking about. Now he uses this example. If you're a Fedora user, Clem goes on, and you want to install Spotify, you're told to go to the snapcraft.io slash Spotify. Spotify does not distribute an RPM package, app image, flat pack, or anything else useful to a Fedora user who wants to download it or to a Fedora maintainer who wants to add it to a repository. Fedora users are told to go into what is essentially a commercial store operated by a Red Hat competitor where stats tell them that their distribution is only seventh the best. So in other words, this is a form of vendor lock and you need to go in and you need to grab it from your competitor instead because we're not going to package it in a way that you can work with it. Now, he says, we're in luck. Spotify does have a, a dev package. We can install a dev. We can move. To, um, <clears throat> he's just going to ask a, b- a bunch of questions here, basically, like, which are good, valid questions, like who controls all this, things like that. I'm going to let you read that part there. Um, so one of the qu- concerns that he has in here is that uh, using the GUI in the Snap Store, you'd need an Ubuntu One account. That's something that really has not come to fruition and I'm not seeing that as probably something that will come to fruition anytime soon. But it was a concern when he wrote this article a year ago. A Fedora user shouldn't be told about Ubuntu or Ubuntu One when downloading software. His browser shouldn't have bookmarks pointed to another distribution. His software shouldn't be designed and uh, tested primarily with another desktop environment and distribution in mind. And when he looks at screenshots, he shouldn't be seeing Ubuntu everywhere. It's wrong for Spotify to do that. And it's wrong for a vendor to think such a store can be the only store for all Linux users. That raises a concern. Now, not where where Spotify chooses to run their software. I think that that if uh, people are seriously concerned about this, if we get enough uh, enough people telling Spotify, hey, release this as a flat pack or something other than the snap for Linux, I think we might actually start to see see some change in that. I, I'm not concerned about what Spotify's doing. But the second part of the sentence, the for a vendor to think that such a store can be the only store for all Linux users, uh, I think that is still a reference to Spotify. But for the store itself to be wanting to be the store, and I know there's a big push to get Linux, you know, get Linux everywhere. That means cutting it back to just a few distributions and, and have centralized stores and all this. Um, no, I don't want Microsoft. If you do that, the Linux community is going to become Microsoft. It's going to be run by one big major commercial thing, which is not going to listen to its user base. It's going to lose the FOSS aspects and it's going to become just another Windows, another Mac, another whatever. And that's why I want more choices. So Flatpak, to contrast this, and the reason Linux Mint uses the Flatpaks is because the Flatpak will allow the the software that distributes the Flatpaks to be used with a variety of different things, including developing your own store. You can develop your own Flatpak store if you want. Uh, You can tell people to point to it. You can package all the software that you want. That's something you can do with Flatpak that you can't do in Snap, which is, uh, is one of the concerns. 
So what their concern is down here is, um, let's, I think they put it over here. The plan isn't just to delegate. Uh, let me read the paragraph up above it first, actually. Uh, I've been invited to participate by the Snap developers, and I'm hoping one day we'll be able to integrate Snap into Linux Mint. Although I'm worried about the impact on the market, I think Snap could be both a client and a file format if it didn't lock us into a single store. You might wonder why I'm so outspoken about this all of a sudden. Well, there's a certain sense of urgency which demands action on our side. Ubuntu is planning to replace the Chromium repository package with an empty package which installs the Chromium Snap. In other words, you install apt updates, Snap becomes a requirement for you con to continue to use Chromium and installs itself behind your back. This breaks one of the major worries people have had when Snap was announced and promised from its developers that it would never replace apt. And you know, I did that whole video on this and I'm still waiting for all the people who said, oh, you're just fear mongering to come back and say, oh yeah, I guess you were right about that. Um, because frankly, that's exactly what they did. Now he wrote this 11 months ago in the time between when he wrote this and now that is exactly how the Chromium package works. You go into Ubuntu now, sudo apt install Chromium. It simply installs SnapD if it's not already installed and proceeds to install the Chromium Snap. That is a concern that I've had, and that is a concern that many people have, because now, again, you're forcing all software to come from a single store run by one commercial company. All right. So he goes on, the plan isn't just to delegate part of apt with Snap in the current Ubuntu release, but also to backport this change towards the 18.04 LTS. I don't know if that was actually finally implemented or not. I really don't know. Uh, we don't want this to affect Linux Mint. I do think the points we're raising here are not well, uh, excuse me, I don't think the points we're raising here are well understood by the community. I hope we'll talk with the Ubuntu and Snap project about this. We're very interested in your feedback as well. A self-installing Snap store, which overwrites part of our apt package base, is a complete no-no. It's something, uh, simply something we have to stop, and it could mean the end of Chromium updates and access to the Snap Store in Linux Mint. So that's really the concern, and that lays the framework. Well, in the blog post that just came out uh, yesterday, I believe, when I'm recording this, the uh, June 20th, um, uh, excuse me, June 1st, 2020 post, they actually did address what they're doing with Snap going forward in Linux Mint 20. So we heard the queer, uh, we also heard your queries on the topic of SnapD. This is a topic which is important to us, and we have explained our position last year. So this is uh, part of the the quote that we just read. Now, what they're going to do now, as he explains, is uh, a year later when the Ubuntu 2004 package base, the Chromium package is indeed an empty and acting without your consent as a backdoor by connecting your computer to the Ubuntu store. Applications in the store cannot be patched or pinned. You can't audit them, hold them, modify them, or even point snap to a different store. Those are the concerns. As uh, you've as much empowerment with this as if you were using a proprietary software, i.e. none. This is in effect similar to a commercial proprietary solution, but with two major differences. Number one, it runs as root. And number two, it installs itself without asking you. First, uh, so this, that is their problem. That is exactly what my concern is with Linux, uh, excuse me, with Ubuntu 2004, those are the concerns that I've had. Do I hate Ubuntu? No, I don't. I still think Ubuntu is a great piece of software. It's just, it's starting to become bad in that it's forcing you to do these proprietary things that frankly, I think a lot of people in the community are not necessarily that big on. So Linux Mint in uh, the upcoming 20 is going to have solutions around this. First, I'm happy to confirm that Linux Mint 20, like previous Mint releases, will not ship with any snaps or SnapD installed. To address the situation will do exactly what we said we should. In Linux Mint 20, Chromium won't be an empty package which installs Snap. It will be an empty package which tells you why it's empty and tells you where to look to get Chromium yourself. I almost wish, okay, I'm split on, I'm split on this choice. On the one hand, it's really good to raise awareness as to why they did this because raising awareness of why they did this is critically important. But in the ease of being you uh, being a user friendly, it would have been better if they just went ahead and 
overrode that one in their their particular package repos, which they have the power to do, and just install Chromium. I mean, that would be a better bet. Rather than telling a new user who wants to use Chromium, here's some extra steps and go do that. Although I don't know what those steps are going to look like. I, I, I really don't know. I haven't seen those announced yet. So that's something we're going to be looking at. I, in other words, I would like it if it installed it directly rather than telling you why. But I love the fact that telling you why because it raises awareness of the actual problem and that might actually cause some change. Um, now, the second thing they're actually doing is in Linux Mint 20, apt will forbid SnapD from getting installed. Now, this is another going to be controversial point because if you indeed want to install Snap, which some people do want to install it, you will not be able to do install it from the apt command line. Um, that in and of itself is interesting. Uh, again, I like their implementation because it's going to prevent not just Chromium, but any future backports that Ubuntu says, hey, let's just go ahead and add these five software silently to make those uh, apt install with snaps. That's going to prevent this from being just a Chromium issue. That's exactly why they did this and it was the right choice to make. However, it does complicate things. If you do want to install SnapD, if you do, they are going to have uh, release notes. Again, we don't have those re release notes yet, but if you want to install Snap, you'll just have to follow the release notes to install Snap on your system. So in other words, Linux Mint 20, you can still use Snap if you want to. They're just crippling apt for being able to do that because Ubuntu has shown their colors in wanting to uh, package snap packages as uh, hidden inside of apt packages. And I, as much as I would, eh, I, I'm a little turry on this one, but I completely understand and agree with why they did it. It prevents other applications from sneaking snap onto your system as well, if it's something that you do not want to do. So that is what we have upcoming in Linux Mint 20, where it stands with snaps. Again, in brief basic summary, snaps are not the all end, oh my God, snaps completely suck. The problem is how they're being implemented on one proprietary store with no auditing power or anything like that. If snap was like an Android APK, you could release it as a system file, you could add it, you could point your snap store to a different location, all those would be a perfectly good reason to run Snap. Those are our valid points. But these issues that Linux Mint team is bringing up is absolutely powerful and absolutely true. These are the concerns that we actually have. I'm very pleased to see Linux Mint taking some, some strong stances of this going forward, and uh, I will be looking forward to testing the betas or the full distributions when they come out and are dropped. So let me know your thoughts about what Linux Mint's doing. Is this good? Is this bad? Would you implement it differently other ways? Let me know all that stuff in the comments down below. Thanks for coming along. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already and you would like to. Give me some thumbs up, thumb down, whatever you like, and we will see you in the next video.